When working with equipment via RS-232 channel, that is with a serial port as it was with IR controlling, you will always need a converter. This converter will convert a command which will be sent via the TCP protocol to the equipment using the COM, COM port. These converters are produced by the Global Cache company and they can be used in Redem projects. It's possible to convert data if you use such converters as GC100 or iTech or IP2SL or Wi-Fi2SL. Let's suppose that we are going to send commands to RS-232 device using the iTouch to a cell device. Let's add this device to the device space using the drag and drop method. As you can see, this device has one serial number appealing to it. It's done using the TCP port and that is 4999. Commands to the CAM port are formed in the hex or ASCII formats. You can select format of sending data and it depends on what time these commands are described in the documentation to your equipment. You can add any number of commands to the command list. In contrast with IR commands, Iridium doesn't have a database, so you should form a list of commands yourself. You should do it manually. You can do it in the project device panel or you can use Iridium device space. I'll tell you how to form commands in project device panel and then I'll return back to database and I will tell you how to create user database. User Use of this database is very convenient. You just have to create this base once and then you can use it in your every project and if you provide, create a device in a concrete Iridium project you will have to import the device from one project to another project. This process doesn't take much effort and time but it's more convenient when all your devices are kept in one device base. So let's pass over to command forming which will be sent via CAM port to the equipment. What command will be and in what format it will be sent to the equipment depends on the device you want to control. You can find list of commands when controlling via RS-232 in the documentation of your equipment or on open resources such as remotecentral.com. Let's suppose we have several commands for sending via CAM port for switching on or switching of the power. These commands are stored in the ASCII format. I'll give you an example how to input a command of the ASCII format to the Iridium command body. The command in de device documentation can have a format of any string. Let's suppose that we use um, the most widely used command. It's switching on power of the device. So this command is a number of symbols and now you can see these symbols and to make a readm understand its format correctly you have to use a readm syntax for isolating data of the ascii format you should use single quotes i mean you have to isolate any input string by single quotes as you can see the string which must be sent to the CAM port was converted to the ASCII format, here it is, and now it's ready for sending to the equipment. But we also need, when working with CAM ports, using RS-232, the end of string symbol. The end of string symbol is the hex code and it is 0x0d or comma 13. This code must be written after closing the string of the ASCII format. Otherwise, CAM port of the control equipment will not understand the command correctly and it will wait for its resuming as the command can include a great number of symbols.
So if you have a command stored in the hex format, you can also input it in the custom data window. But when working with a hex format, you should use a special number of symbols. That means if the original command looks like this, that is a number of three hex codes, you need to add to every code a combination of symbols and it is 0x and then separate these hex codes by commas. It's a compulsory condition which will provide you with the correct forming of commands in Iridium. With the help of these symbols and separators, Iridium understands that input data is stored in the hex format and it sends it correctly. When the command was filmed like this in Iridium, custom data, Uh, you can see here that you should also input the end of string symbol and that is 0x, 0d. Now we can pass over to connection to the converter. Setting of connection, that is IP address of the converter is done after you select a device in the project device tree. Please make sure that the address which was indicated in the web interface coincides with IP address indicated in the host tab when setting up a device in Iridium project. As you can see, the iTouch device has a number of setup before feedback channels. Here they are, and feedback channels are requests which are automatically sent to the global cache devices and they were set using scripts in order to input these properties in Iridium. When working with devices via RS-232, the most important condition is the right setting of CAM port setting its speed, bit count and parity in the web interface of the iTouch device. Before you start your work, you have to appeal to the web interface of the iTouch device and set up its speed, bit count and parity of the CAM port of the device for correct interaction with the controlled equipment. All these properties depend on the device you are connecting to using the CAM port iTouch. So after you set up all commands, you can assign these commands to graphic items of the project using the drag and drop method. When dragging a command, a dialog window opens, you can see it, where you have to select the event for action which will indicate a command sending to the control equipment. When working with devices via RS-232, you can select the press release or hold events. The press event means that the command will be sent by pressing a graphic item. Release means that the command will be sent by releasing the item and hold means that the command will be sent in a cycle by holding this graphic item. When working with the hold event there are some features which I'll show you right now. So let's activate two events, press and hold. The assigned command will be displayed in the programming tab of the object properties window. As you can see now, a command has been added to the press and hold events, but for the correct work, we also need some additional setting of the hold event. That is indicating of delay between these send commands. So this command must be sent in some interval. We need such a command, um, for example, when we want to volume up. To indicate delay between commands, you should select the delay command in the other tab of macros commands of the graphic item. Click on it twice. I mean the other tab. Then you will see a dialog window. Delay is a time interval. It is set in milliseconds, which will be between command setting. For example, I'm indicating now delay of 500 milliseconds. The delay event must be put before sending command using the move up button. I'm moving it up. Why should you do this? Uh, let's return to the programming tab of our graphic item by the press event. 
the command will be sent for the first time and then if you don't release the graphic item so if you're going to hold it the hold event will start the delay the delay will be 500 milliseconds and then the command will be sent for the second time so this cycle will repeat all the time when you're holding the graphic item now setting up of sending command fire rs232 with the global cache equipment can be finished and as i promised you at the beginning of our lesson i'll tell you about the description of creating rs232 devices in order to create user device based in iridium gui editor there is a tab of editing device base so let's pass over to this tab and here we can see an interface of editor of database where you can create your own database or you can attach database from download it from our website or forum or the app store you can edit these current databases you can edit all databases but the exception is a standard iridium database so you can't edit any component of this database as it includes native drivers which were set up before and they must not be changed by user. Let's create a new database. When creating it, you should indicate the way of its storing and you should also write its name. Let's select a new create database in the list of available databases. Now you can see it in the list. Then if you want to add a folder of devices which can be used in Iridium GUI editor, you need to use the add button. Here you should select adding of RS232 device. Then you should indicate name of this device and form its properties such as connection to RS232 port and device type. You can select its device type from the drop-down list. If your RS232 device won't be used on its own, it will be connected to iTech equipment or to global cache equipment. You can switch off all properties of connection to the CAM port. In this case, you have to click twice on the property and then activate the hidden tab then you should set outputs of the rs232 device if it is a standard mode these outputs can't be edited and the third tab includes commands which must be sent via cam port of the device so you should add a new command write its name and by double click the command properties window will open and here you can edit this command. In the command body you can indicate its description and you can also form a string of the ASCII or hex formats. Here you can input any data but don't forget about Iridium syntax. Don't forget about using of single quotes for the string of the ASCII format and separators as commas for data of the hex format. So when the string is finished, when working via RS232, you need to input the end of string symbol. The created device in database is stored when closing device base. And you can add that device on any RS232 output of global cache devices. So here our acquaintance with controlling equipment via RS232 is finished. And in the next lessons, I'll tell you about working with equipment via the TCP, UDP and HTTP protocols without using iTech converters. In this case, you don't need any converter as Iridium allows you to send commands via the mentioned above protocols without them. You just only need to connect your equipment to the Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Thank you for the attention.